Amen. 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 Amen.
and say it's amen. amen. I appreciate that. Uh, I don't know if you caught this. It was merely a blip uh, on the, the news. Uh, but Israel signed a peace agreement with the United Arab Emirates. Uh, so uh, if you study your Bible, you will find that all of that is in the scripture. Yeah. And you will find that the Arabs will break that peace agreement. That's right. And uh, brother, we are living in the time right before Jesus comes. Yeah. We prove that scripture. And uh, so I'm excited, man. When I heard they signed it, I thought, hallelujah. Uh, now the next step is for them to break it. You said, when they're going to break it? I don't know. But according to the scripture, they'll break it. And uh, when they do, uh, it reveals to us that we are right there at the doorstep of the coming of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Amen. I'm excited and looking forward to it. I talked to somebody the other day, and they said, well, preacher, you talk about the rapture, but... Uh, but uh, the word rapture ain't in the Bible and it's false doctrine. I said, neither is Sunday school. Is that false doctrine? <laughs> they said, no. I said, well, well, the rapture is a term that we use. I understand it's not found in the King James Bible, but that does not negate the fact that the Bible says, and we which are alive right. oh, yeah. at the coming of the Lord, that the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain. Uh, shall be caught up into the air to ever be with our Lord. Listen, make no mistake, the doctrine of the rapture is in the Bible. And the reason we call it the rapture is because the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ is in two parts. You have the rapture of the church, the first part. Then you have the second advent where Jesus comes back with all of us after the seven-year tribulation right. period. Uh, and, and we come riding back with him where he shows up and uh, he doesn't show up to take sides. He shows up to take over. Yeah. And uh, so to differentiate between the rapture and the second advent, we call the first part of the second coming the rapture. That's all. And uh, I said, make no mistake, our vile body shall be changed like unto his glorious body. And one day when he comes, on the way up, I'm getting a new body. Praise the name of Jesus. And uh, so he's coming, folks. Uh, I would sit with my feet untangled. Uh, all that stuff we've been preaching for 20, 25 years, now we are seeing the signs that it's coming to pass. Make no mistake, Jesus is coming. Yeah. And uh, I look forward to seeing Him. You ever think about this? Uh, this, this ain't going to sound real spiritual, uh, but I'm going to be honest. Uh, part of me, it thrills my heart oh, to yeah. think that Jesus is coming. Yeah. But there's another part of it that scares me a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm a little bit nervous about yeah. meeting Him. And uh, I, I, listen, I want to meet him, and I, I'm going to. Uh, but it makes me a little bit nervous. And if anything, it makes me want to get to work and do something, do some more for the Lord before he comes. And uh, so I'm grateful. Now tonight we're going to have one more, and I want Brother Stephen and Miss Nicole and Miss Kayla to come, Amen. if they would, and I want them to sing something for you. And so we're going to turn them loose and let them sing. Amen. We sure appreciate them. They, they, they do a phenomenal job. We're grateful uh, that the Lord has blessed us with some yeah. phenomenal singers and musicians. Uh, we're grateful for it. Amen. So we're going to turn them loose and let them sing. You pray for them, okay? Uh, as they sing. <coughs>
I can't hardly ever hear that song without thinking. Not only does he know my name, he knows my shoe size and my address and how much gas is in my car. Yeah. He knows how much money's in my bank account. Listen, he knows everything. And uh, I'm grateful that I serve a God that knows all about me. Amen. And uh, I sure appreciate you being singing uh, tonight. Tonight, uh, I want you to take your Bible from the book of John, and the, the Gospel of John, chapter number 11. The Gospel of John, chapter number 11. Uh, I will not take the time to read the entire story. I will simply read one verse that I want to focus on tonight and try to give you what the Lord uh, gave me. It is unusual in the fact that Brother Aaron dealt with John chapter number 11 this morning. When he finished Sunday school this morning, uh, he popped in my office and when he did, I showed him my outline for tonight. And uh, Brother Aaron said, are you kidding me? I said, no sir. And uh, so tonight I want to deal with the subject of Jesus wept. If you would, take a look at John chapter number 11, and I want you to look at verse number 35. John chapter number 11, and verse number 35. The Bible simply says this, Jesus wept. Let's pray. Our Father, God, tonight we're grateful uh, for the service this morning. Thank you for all the visitors and the crowd. And thank you for liberty to preach and good singing. And Father, tonight uh, we need you again. Lord, we uh, ask that you would help your people tonight use this broken, fra frail vessel. Lord, to touch us with power and anoint us with the Holy Ghost. Lord, and use me to help your people. And Father, you said by the foolishness of preaching, not foolish preaching, but the foolishness of preaching. It pleased God. And so, Father, tonight may you be pleased uh, to touch your unprofitable servant. Lord, I know what I am in this flesh, but no good for that. And Father, tonight, if thy people receive help, instruction, guidance, encouragement, uh, Lord, it will be because you gave it to them. And so, Lord, while I speak to their ears, our prayer is, Father, you would speak to their hearts. Lord, I pray you to bless, move, uh, do whatever needs to be done in each and every heart. Lord, one may need encouragement, while the other needs to be uh, convicted. I, I, I know not. But, Father, I know that you're a God that can do all things. And so, Father, we're trusting you. We're leaning into you. We're resting in you, asking you for thy anointing power. Lord, if you don't grant it, we'll be in a master show. And so, Father, it'll be a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal unless you help us. And so, Father, I pray that marshal uh, the sweet Holy Ghost of God, Lord, and send it to meet with us. Help us and use us. And, Father, whatever you do for us, we'll be careful. We'll thank you. We'll praise you. We love you. For the only, you're the only one worthy in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The verse I just read to you... <coughs> is the shortest verse in the entire Bible. Tonight, this verse contains two simple words. Jesus wept. Though it only contains two short words, it is one of the most profound verses in either testament. These two words are the most powerful words in the English language. I'd like to look at these two words by way of introduction. I'd like you to notice, first of all, the word Jesus. According to your Bible, there is no other name given among men uh, whereby we must be saved. There is no other name that has the power of this name. And the Bible says this, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to look to the glory of God the Father. And tonight, it is a matchless name. It is a innocent, pure name. This name is synonymous with sacrifice and love 
and giving of oneself. Well, the Bible talks about our Savior. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God, uh, but made Himself of no reputation. Right. How could it be that this darling Son of God, uh, the ruler and creator of this universe, would humble Himself to walk among sinful men and allow them to do what they did to Him Amen. just to purchase us? Hear me tonight. There is a name I love to hear. Amen. I love to sing its praise. It sounds like music in my ears. The sweetest name on earth. Hear me tonight. There is no other name whereby we must be saved. Tonight I am thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, listen, brother. Tonight uh, uh, th that name causes the devils to tremble. Uh, tonight it will send the devil fleeing. Uh, tonight that name will deliver. It will cleanse. Uh, uh, tonight it will deliver. Uh, uh, it will grant, grant victory. Uh, tonight it is that name that, that sinners call on that are converted. Uh, hear me tonight. Uh, you know how you got converted? Uh, it wasn't the baptismal pool. It wasn't your good works. Uh, tonight if you're saved and your sins are gone, thanks be unto God. It's because you right. called upon His name. Uh, whosoever uh, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right. I'm glad as an unworthy sinner. Yeah. I bowed my knee and I cried out to Jesus. And Jesus washed me clean and right. saved my never dying soul. Uh, tonight uh, it is the most powerful name in all of this universe. Yeah. 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 Thankful for his name. Do you know why we end our prayer with in Jesus' name? I'll tell you why. Because that name carries weight in the heaven. Right. Our world does not put a whole lot of uh, 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 weight behind his name. But hear me tonight. I, in, the, uh, in heaven, uh, in glory, uh, that name carries weight. Uh, I can't pray in my name. You know why? I'm not worthy that God should do anything for me. I'm fallen. I'm corrupt. I'm sinful. I'm not, when, I, when I tack on at the end of my request, in Jesus' name, I listen, all of heaven perks up because in that name, there is purity. There is righteousness. And God the Father said, now you're not worthy that I should do it for you. But when you ask for it in His name, and now I can get on board with that. And I can answer your prayer. Why? Because of His name. Name. I want to say thank God but for the name of Jesus tonight. Had it not been for his name, we all went to hell because of his name. There is hope for a lost and dying world. My brother, I think they can cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ and be born again. Thank God for his name. Amen. And secondly, I want you to notice the word wept. There is no other word that represents human emotion. It is the highest form of expression of emotion. When things overwhelm us, when sadness and sorrow and grief and stress get, to, get more than we can bear, tears will roll down your face. Amen. You ever had your heart so broken you couldn't do nothing but weep? Yeah. Amen. I have. Listen, tears are partially a result of living in a sin-cursed world. Nothing sets grief and sorrow like tears. Listen, the Bible says a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. You realize tonight that tears are a language that God understands. Right. Amen. Tonight you can go and ask the Lord to do something and He does not do it. You can ask again He doesn't do it. But I promise you if you ever get a broken heart before God and the tears begin to roll down your face as you pray and your heart's broken, you'll get the attention of Almighty God. Yes, right. God knows what it is to shed tears and God knows what it is to have a broken heart. 
Tonight, there is no greater expression of grief and sorrow and sadness living on this sin-cursed dirt ball, living in this sin-cursed body than to shed tears. And it may be at the graveside of a loved one. I have preached way too many funerals in my life. And I hope I don't have to preach no more before Jesus comes, but there is no doubt if Jesus carries His coming, then I will stand at the graveside with another family as they lower the, the, the body of a loved one down into the ground. And I will try my best to comfort them and pray for them. And I will shake their hands as the tears roll down their face. Tonight, uh, the tears are a language. I mean, what a powerful word. A uh, word to describe sorrow and sadness. But you realize on the other end of the spectrum, uh, it is uh, tears represent great joy. Uh, listen, I've married some of you in here, and I, it always tickles me because uh, my, my wife says, uh, the church thinks you're mean and hard, but really you're just a big softy. And I said, I am not. She said, I've been to a few weddings with you. <laughs> I remember when Kayla and Aaron got married, I was so happy for them. I could barely control myself while I was marrying them. Aaron was about to cry, and Kayla was about to cry, and Annette was crying. <laughs> They had me all tore up. I couldn't hardly say the things I needed to say because the tears of joy. When we married Caleb and Nicole, uh, the same thing. Uh, we, as we uh, talked about their vows, and listen, something wells up in me just because I'm so excited and have so much joy. I watched all of them uh, grow up in our church, and I watched the Lord bless them and help them and do a work of grace in their heart. And now here they are, one of the happiest days of their life, and just tears of joy. I overflow when we married Dustin and Jessica. Uh, tears well up in my eyes. You know why? Because uh, it's cold. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it was cold, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you can act spiritual if you want to. I like frozen there. <laughs> Told my wife when I left the house, she said, You gonna take your overcoat? I said, I won't need it. <laughs> I wasn't there three minutes. <laughs> oh, I wish I'd have brought my overcoat. <laughs> but I was just so happy for her. I was excited for them. Young people starting their lives together and uh, listen, uh, uh, and, and living for God and serving the Lord, faithful to church. And can I be honest, I'm not cried because God kept all these girls in our church. Amen. Amen. And I suppose they married some hard headed boy and running off somewhere. Hint, hint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I didn't want to lose them. And the Lord worked that thing out so they married boys and stayed right here in our church. They were tears of joy. Amen. Listen, some of you know what I'm talking about. We shed tears at the worst moment of our lives. When our hearts are broken, when our kids have gone astray, at the loss of a loved one, at the, 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 the worst possible moment of life, uh, the tears fall like rain. But by the same token, uh, at the best times of our lives, uh, uh, tears fall like rain and joy overwhelms us. Uh, uh, there is no other word to describe a human emotion uh, like the word tears. Uh, it means something. And when we read that our Savior wept, uh, it reveals His humanity. Now remember, Jesus is the God-man. Right. Yeah. He's not 50% God and 50% man. He's 100% God and 100% man. Right. Yeah. You say, explain that. I will soon as you explain to me how he was born of a virgin. Yeah. Yeah. I can't explain it, but I believe it. Right. That's what the Bible teaches. Yeah. He's 100% God and he's 100% man. Yeah. He reveals his humanity by weeping. Jesus wept. But he also reveals his deity by raising Lazarus from the dead. Amen. Tonight, you're looking at, at Jesus Christ who's 100% God, 100% man. And he proves, it, proves both of those attributes in the text. Again, he proves his humanity by weeping his deity by raising Lazarus from the dead. 
tonight one of the most powerful verses you'll ever read. Yes, it's short. Yes, it's just two simple words. Yes, in the context of the story, many times we just read it and, and, and press on and, and continue on with our reading without really stopping and reflecting on what that verse really means. That Jesus wept. And tonight, we're talking about God in the flesh wept with human beings. Mary and Martha have come out. They are heartbroken. They are grieved. They are wounded. They are confused. And listen, you know what they're thinking? Though it may not be written in the text, you know what's going through their mind. Jesus, we loved you. We fed you. You've had dinner at our table. And Lord, uh, you have gone away. Lazarus has gotten sick. We sinned for you. And Lord, you did not show up. When we wanted you to. Right. And you, 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 as a matter of fact, it's even voiced in the text. She said this. Lord, if you'd been here, our brother Lazarus had not died. You will find that Jesus wept. Tonight, that's what I want to preach on. Briefly. Why Jesus wept. What could draw such emotion from the Savior. What would cause the God of this universe to weep? Was it because he was helpless? Absolutely not. We know it from the text because he ends up speaking Lazarus's name. And somebody said, why did he call Lazarus by name? Because if he had just said, get up, the whole crowd would have got out. Right. So he calls him out specifically. And so we know it's not because of his helplessness. Many times we cry in this flesh because we are helpless to remedy a situation, whether it be for ourselves or for someone else. We are overcome because we don't have the ability to fix the problem before us. But that is not the case with our Savior. He not only can He fix it, He does fix it just a few verses later. It was not His helplessness that caused Him to weep. You say, well, he weeps because uh, of Lazarus that he loved him. Nah, that don't hold water either. Because you'll find he raised him from the dead. And then in chapter number 12, verse number 1, you'll find he's sitting down fellowshipping with him. Right. Tonight, the question is, why did Jesus weep? The answer tonight is simple. It's one word. Compassion. Because Mary and Martha were hurt. Jesus was hurt. Because they were broken hearted, Jesus was broken right. Amen. Tonight, the Lord wept because His people <coughs> were hurt. Hear me tonight. My point is simply this. When you hurt, He hurt. Tonight, many times as we go through trial and trouble and and difficult situations, we feel like the Lord is a million miles away. But tonight He is not. He is on your side. And He loves you so much and He commiserates with you. And tonight, He knew what He was going to do. He knew He was going to fix the problem. But because they were heartbroken and wounded, it wounded our Savior because of His love for Mary and Martha. Tonight, there is no greater demonstration of the love of Jesus outside of Calvary than John eleven thirty five, 35, Amen. where Jesus wept. Praying. Tonight, and I don't know where you're at, what you're going through, what your situation is, but I know this, Jesus is on your side. Yes, right. And He has compassion upon His people. And He cares what you care about. Yeah. You listen to me tonight. Others may not care what you're going through. Others may give you a, may, may kind of just pass it off like it's not a big deal. And they say, well, we'll, we'll pray about that. And, and they kind of go on about their way. But hear me tonight, Jesus cares. Amen. The old song says, does Jesus care? Oh, yes, I know He cares. And tonight I wanted to remind you of the, the, the compassion of our Savior. Jesus cares enough that he would weep with those even though he knows it is a temporary situation. Right. Amen. 
because Mary is grieved and Martha is grieved and because they don't understand the plan of God and what God's trying to do in their life. He, they are heartbroken and because of their heartbreak, uh, His heart broke. Uh, listen to me tonight. Uh, you know, God's not against you tonight. God's on your side. Amen. And the Lord loves you and He cares about you. Uh, you say, I'm praying and I can't seem to find God. Hey, He cares tonight. Amen. And He loves you tonight. Uh, and He's worried over you tonight. Uh, and He's concerned about you. One of the greatest verses in all either testament says this, the thoughts that the Lord thinks toward us are more than the sand of the sea. Yeah. Now listen, you go out to Hillhead Island and start counting grains of sand. Listen to me. The Lord thought about you more than all the grains of sand on Hillhead Island Amen. today. Tonight you may feel alone, you may feel forsaken, you may feel forgotten, you may feel like God has turned His back on you or God's against you, but uh, hear me tonight, He is a God of compassion and He loves His own. Yes, He knows victory is coming. Yes, He knows right. what He's going to do down the road. But tonight, uh, He is commiserate and He is compassionate toward those that are His. Tonight you are not fighting the battle alone. Amen. Tonight He is on your side. But you must realize that Jesus had a purpose for tarrying. You must realize that Jesus knew exactly what He was doing. Had He showed up when Lazarus was sick and raised Him off of the sick bed, they could have very easily attributed His recovery to the medicine that they gave. Or the prayers that they pray. Right. But when you're dead and you ain't got no breath in you and they done buried you, ain't nobody getting credit for you getting up but Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And all of those who are around, you read the text, all of those who are around watched the Savior raise Lazarus from the dead and were saved by grace. Yeah. Because Jesus came. Right. You realize tonight sometimes why the Lord doesn't show up and answer your prayers immediately is for the benefit of others. Oh yeah. He'll get more glory out of you suffering than he will out of showing up and giving you a life of ease and comfort. Amen. And tonight we must understand this thing is bigger than us. It's not all about us. There are other souls that hang in the balance. And if your suffering rescues one soul, redeems one, causes one soul to turn to Christ and saves them 40 billion years in hell, would it not be worth it? Amen. Tonight, even though He knows what He's going to do, yes, He's going to show up. Yes, He's going to fix it. He just didn't do it when they thought He should. Amen. They are ignorant, truly ignorant, in, in, in the purest form of the word, of what Jesus is doing. Right. They are so blinded by their pain and their sorrow that they don't understand that God has a bigger plan. As a matter of fact, when Jesus tries to reveal His plan, they're thinking it's for the last day. He said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother had not died. The Lord said, do you not believe on the resurrection and the life? And then he, she said, yeah, yeah, I know He'll get up on the last day. The Lord was talking about it just a few moments. Right. Yeah. Amen. Tonight, do not allow your suffering or your sorrow to blind you to the bigger picture. Right. Listen, the Lord shows up and fixes it. I guarantee there are more, more tears, but this time those tears of sorrow have been turned into tears of joy. They are rejoicing at Can you imagine? You, I've been to a few funerals. And Brother Willie, can you imagine as I say, we're at the graveside and I open my Bible and I read 1 Corinthians 15, 58. And I, I, I read that text. It's, it's my favorite text to read. Uh, Though it be sown in dishonor, it shall be raised in glory. And, and, and I read that text and all of a sudden the Lord shows up and says, excuse me, preacher, and touches the casket. And whoever's in the casket gets up and says, hey, what are we doing for lunch? Uh -oh. Can you imagine what joy there would be with the family? 
That's what happens with Lazarus. Hear me tonight. My point is this. No problem you face is too great. No sorrow that you bear is too heavy for the Lord to live. Amen. Jesus is a God of compassion. And He loves you tonight. And tonight, no matter what you go through, no matter where you are, the Lord is on your side. Yes, sir. Amen. The Lord reveals His love for His people even though it is a temporary problem. He weeps with them. And He sorrows with them. Because they're... Listen, He doesn't weep over the problem. He can fix the problem. He weeps over their broken heart. They hurt. He hurt. Amen. And tonight, I just came to encourage you that Jesus still loves you. Jesus is on the throne. Jesus has not forgotten you. I can imagine uh, Noah as he's building the boat. We find that God speaks to Noah about building a boat. But we don't find where the Lord speaks to him again until the boat is at completion. Right. 120 years, Noah took the mocking and the laughing and, and people making fun of him. But finally the Lord said, Come thou into the ark. And brother, listen to me. There's no doubt there was some tears. There was no doubt there was some misunderstanding. But the Lord showed Himself faithful and showed up for Noah. May I be honest with you tonight? Just as He showed up for Noah, just as He showed up for Lazarus, just as He showed up for Mary and Martha, listen to me, He will show up for you. That's right. Amen. That thing you've been praying about, that thing you've been fasting about, that thing you've been seeking the Lord over, that thing that's got you troubled, that thing that's got you discouraged, that last thing you think about before you go to bed, and that first thing you think about when you wake up, hey, hear me, Jesus is on the throne tonight, and He sees the issue, and He sees the problem, and if He tarries and doesn't show up immediately, it's because He's got a greater plan. Uh, sometimes it's to help others. Sometimes it's to change you. Right. Tonight, Jesus wept because of His compassion. He cares about His people. Amen. What hurts you, hurts Him. And tonight, instead of shining, here's, we've got a bad habit, man, in this flesh. When problems and burdens come, this is what we want to do. We want to shy away from the Lord instead of getting close to the Lord. When problems come, you say, I'm so frustrated, I'm going to go read my Bible. No, no, no. That's the very thing you need to do. Right. Hear me tonight. You need to lean into Jesus and not away from Him. That's right. Amen. Tonight, if you're struggling, you're burdened, you're brokenhearted, you're discouraged because God hasn't shown up and fixed the situation in your life, let me tell you what you do tonight. Lean into Him, not away from Him. That's right. Because Jesus cares. Okay, Amen. He loves you. He gave Himself for you. Listen, if He loved you enough to die for you, don't you reckon He loves you enough to take care of you? Amen. May I say this? Has the Lord not proven Himself faithful all of these years? Yes. Has He not over and over and over showed up? Maybe He don't show up when we want Him to. Maybe He don't do it the way we want Him to. But hear me tonight. He always shows up and He is always faithful. Right. My point is this. Just keep praying. So if you got lost loved ones, you're grieved and you're discouraged, hear me, just keep praying. God knows where you're at and God will provide. And tonight, you got young people going through difficulties and kids having problems and you've got financial struggles and difficulties and problems and you're wondering, where's the Lord? Why the Lord showed up? But hear me tonight, Jesus is faithful. His compassion is revealed. Here's the God of the universe could have let us die and go to hell. Amen. He didn't have to save you. That's right. Amen. He didn't have to convict you. Right. He could have let you be born in Africa beating a tree against a stick and call that worship. <laughs> he very well could. But God in His goodness lets you be born in the greatest nation on the, on the planet. Amen. 
Not only that, it puts you in a Bible believing Baptist church where you can hear the truth and trust Christ as your Savior. Now, if He loves you that much, He loves you enough to see you through. And tonight, I simply came to remind you of the compassion of our Savior. You say, but I've messed up. I know, but He's compassionate. You say, but I ain't done everything just right. I know, but He's compassionate. You say, but I've got frustrated. I know, but, but he's, he's compassionate. Right. I want to say thank God for our Savior tonight who has compassion on those, even those that are out of the way. And tonight, the Lord is kind and gracious and loves His people to the point that He weeps when they weep. But may I say this, I'm sure He rejoices when we rejoice. Yeah. And tonight, Jesus wept because He cared. Right. Don't ever let the devil tell you that Jesus doesn't care. Right. Because He cares. Amen. That loved one you're praying for, keep praying. That burden you're praying for, keep praying for. That sorrow you're going through, just press on for the glory of God. Jesus cares. Amen. And just like Mary and Martha got to see the miracle and got to see the Lord do something unusual and got to see one of the greatest miracles in the New Testament, so you too shall see the blessing of God in that situation. Here's the thing. Everybody wants a miracle. But you realize before you get the miracle, you got to have a problem. Yeah. Without a problem, there ain't no miracle. Without the fiery furnace, the three Hebrew boys don't get to see Jesus. Yeah. Right. Without persecution and suffering and being cast into a lion's den, Daddy don't get to see God close the mouths of the lions. When the children of Israel come out and they're, they're trapped at the Red Sea and they're freaking out, and they got to see the Lord open up the Red Sea and they crossed on dry land and watch the Red Sea close up on their enemies, you don't get that kind of miracle without a problem. Amen. Tonight we, uh, we fret and worry over the problem. We don't want the problem. We just want the miracle. But without the problem, there is no miracle. Yeah, you're right. Amen. The man at the pool of Bethesda lays there 38 years before Jesus comes and touches him and heals him. Tonight, you're just in the beginning state. You're just in the problem state. Mary and Martha was in the problem state. But then the Lord showed up and raised him from the dead. And tonight, that what the Lord did there, he can still do. He ain't changed. Right. And while you're suffering, he is compassionate and he commiserates with you. You know what the Bible says? That our Savior is touched with the feeling of our infirmity. Tonight, Jesus is on your side. You can trust Him. You can believe Him. And tonight, just as He did something miraculous for them, He'll do something miraculous for your lover. Right. He'll do something miraculous for your finances. He'll do something miraculous for that struggle. He'll do something miraculous in your marriage. He'll do something miraculous. He's in the miracle working business. Yeah. That's who He is. Yeah. Right. And tonight, I just came to tell you that Jesus is still compassionate to His people. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your need is. But I know there's a Savior in heaven that commiserates. And, and, and listen, He's touched by the feeling of our infirmity. When we're heartbroken, He's heartbroken. When we're discouraged, he, he feels that. Tonight, you can trust Him. He'll show up after all. And so I said all that to say this. Hang in there, child of God. Keep praying. Keep serving. Keep living for Jesus. And let the Lord show up somewhere down the road. You'll be glad you did. Amen. Amen. Right. Tonight, as we stand, maybe you're facing a particular problem. Maybe it's physical. Maybe uh, it's financial. Maybe it's marital. I don't know what your problem is tonight. Maybe there's something you've been praying about. Maybe it's a lost loved one. I don't know what situation you find yourself in. And I know this, the Lord loves you, and the Lord cares about your problems. And tonight, if you need to come, why don't you come? 
Bring that thing to Jesus. People are already moving. Why don't you come? Bring that problem, that burden to sorrow to your Savior. Here's what he said, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. He cares tonight, child of God. He loves you tonight. He's able tonight. He sees the struggle. He sees the burden. And He cares. Yes, He cares. Tonight He wants and wishes to help. He wants to provide strength and encouragement along the journey. Tonight if He'll bring it all to Him, He will take care of it. Tonight you can come until you get your answer. You can find peace and joy until He shows up and does for you what you want Him to do. And tonight if you need to come, you come, Father, I'm thankful that Jesus wept. What a powerful verse. What a revelation of truth that you care. It matters to you. And Lord, you commiserate with our sorrow, our sadness, our broken heart. I'm grateful, Lord, that we serve a Savior that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. I'm glad you understand. Lord, I'm glad you'll provide help and hope and relief until our answer comes. May you help your people tonight. May you bless your people tonight. May you encourage them, Lord, to, to, to lean into Jesus tonight. And Father, we'll thank you. We'll praise you. Whatever you do, in Jesus' precious name and for his dear sake, we ask it and pray. Amen. Thank you.